Okay. This webinar is going to focus on the Forensic Science Academy, which is now being sponsored by Forensic Training Unlimited. Um, some of you might be aware of the Forensic Science Academy. It has been around since 1998, and it was developed uh, by my predecessor, Dr. Janice Cavanaugh. After the O.J. Simpson trial, she realized the need for uniform training from uh, agency to agency. And back in the 90s, that type of training was not available. So for example, in the O.J. Simpson case, you had individuals who were not trained properly, and I mean the word properly as we use it now, gloves, uh, proper procedures, et cetera, et cetera. So Dr. Kavanaugh developed this program, and at the time, she had her very first class was six individuals, and again, that was back in 1998. So I, I don't get too stressed out when we have uh, these particular core courses because we're, we've revamped the entire Forensic Science Academy in, in, in a couple of steps. We have decided to go ahead with the Forensic Science Academy and offer that this coming summer so we can get all the core classes. So some of you may have already taken some core classes. If you choose to take those core classes again, there will be no charge to you. So that uh, will entice you to refresh your particular skills. We will have other classes that for example, uh, we're, we're not going to do a core class, but incorporate it into the Forensic Science Academy. So again, if you have any questions, um, just go ahead and uh, click away, and I'll be more than happy to answer them along the way. And if I'm going too quickly or you can't hear, just please let me know. So some of the um, modules in the Forensic Science Academy, uh, you can see them here on the screen, the fingerprint identification, uh, basic crime scene investigation, which a couple of you have already taken. We do have advanced crime scene investigation. Again, uh, some of you have taken those classes. Uh, friction skin, radiology, and I'll get into that as we go along. Uh, one of the big things everybody wants uh, to be trained with is in death investigation. And we have decided to take our most popular courses and separate them so some people can take it uh, month by month and then other people can take it all within the Forensic Science Academy. Now the Academy is generally uh, every single weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, from about 8 to 4.30, and we're looking at approximately three months. Now, some of you might think, oh my gosh, that's, that's a lot of time, but actually it isn't because it will fly by rather quickly, and our Academy offers over 200 hours of hands-on training, and that's what most agencies want. Yes, they want the individuals to have um, a degree of some sort, either a two or four year, but they also want some type of hands-on activities that you, when you're going into your oral uh, interviews, your oral boards, they can ask you questions and you'll be familiar with the terminology. Okay? And so some of you may not have that particular uh, expertise yet, but by taking uh, courses either through the Forensic Science Academy or our other courses through Forensic Training Unlimited, we're going to get you there. And we're all for training. That's our entire focus. Um, there are other programs out there. Um, I encourage anybody to get trained either through us or there's another hands-on program in uh, San Diego Way. There's another one yet in um, the San Francisco area. But in between that, I have yet to discover any program, training program, that is focused on the student. There are a lot of programs that are focused on uh, individuals or personnel that are already in the field. And of course, when you're in the field, you have to be constantly trained. There's always new techniques. So that's what sets our program, our training program, apart from from other training programs that are, again, focused on the forensic professional already uh, working. Now, I kind of like, and some of you might have already experienced it, that we have smaller classes because that fosters the relationship between your instructor and yourself. You get a lot of uh, people saying, well, you know what, Mr. Nenta, I, I don't know how to approach the instructor. 
um, you know, I don't know what to say. You know, everybody get, kind of gets intimidated. Um, but I purposely did it that way. I kind of like uh, the workshops to be below 20. Actually, my favorite is really below 15 because, again, uh, people can get to know one another. People can uh, start developing professional relationships. And you never know where you might encounter your colleague, your, your workshop participant, um, because he or she might be going up for the same position as you are. So we're going to go with our fingerprint classification pattern. We will offer this particular module 40 hours. Um, it will take up four weekend days consecutively. So we're looking at Saturday and Sunday, which is about 10 hours each day. Saturdays and, and, and the following Saturday and Sunday, again, 10 hours. And we have to do it 40 hours because most agencies require at minimum 40 hours fingerprint classification training. So if we offered 32 hours, that's not going to fly for you guys. You need 40 hours. Um, and you will be able to be trained uh, how to classify fingerprint patterns. They are just three patterns that we have. It's loops, arches, and worlds. Uh, so if you remember the, the word law, you will never forget those three patterns, loops, arches, and worlds. Within those particular patterns, there are sub-classifications, and that this class will tell you. It will, sh it will show you. You will be trained how to classify. Okay? So that is our, really our biggest class because, again, we have to give that uh, 40 hours. Um, <laughs> Most of you may not be aware that there is a particular technique how to dust and lift fingerprints. Again, some of you who were exposed to our basic and our advanced crime scene investigation course, you got a taste of it, and it's, it's a great thing. Um, we are developing another workshop to introduce the various uh, powders that are available, because a powder that you use on a porous texture isn't the same thing that you're going to use on a window or, for instance, some glass or um, uh, a ceramic cup, you know, some, some things like that. There are other powders that are fluorescent powders, and they um, illuminate quite well with a special light, a black light. So there are various uses for the different types of powders. I encourage all of you to get started in becoming familiar with the different types of powders, and if you email me, well, oh, now, now that I have your email address, I do have some uh, information for you, and I can, I can send out once you, you sign up for uh, the particular module, I can send that information out to you. Because remember, we're all about training. We want to get you guys trained in the terminology and the supplies that are out there so when you do go in for an interview, you will know what you're speaking about. This would be quite embarrassing if you didn't, correct? Uh, one of my favorite modules is forensic photography. Um, nowadays, it's all about digital. Um, there's a lot of digital cameras out there, and believe it or not, when you're in a pinch, you can use obviously your iPhone, any type of point-and-shoot digital camera. Um, this past uh, year, we had a forensic photography class, and it was attended quite well. Uh, my favorite is um, doing the uh, conducting the photography in the dark and you have painting with light, which is a uh, particular technique where you use the available light uh, in order to illuminate your scene. And so you're going to be scratching your head and say, well, why is that important? Because you might be encountering or you might be in an environment where there has no light, and you'd have to figure out how to illuminate that particular scene. Because if you do wait for uh, morning to come, perhaps some of your evidence may have been either washed away, blown away. It's not the same as when you capture it at that particular moment. No questions? Any questions so far? I think we're, we're, we're pretty good. Um, the forensic photography course, the module, you do not need a um, digital camera. It is helpful, but you don't need it. It's not required. We usually uh, buddy up uh, with the participants. You know, usually people start making friends, connections, things like that. So one another uh, will help the other one if he or she does not have a digital camera. Now let me remind you, our instructors for each particular module, they are the expert in their particular field. 
Uh, we have instructors that deal with obviously death investigations, uh, instructors that are experts in gang uh, involvement and gang detail. Most of our instructors are uh, experienced as a crime scene investigator, so they do both. It's uh, basic investigation and advanced investigation, as well as photography. And they have been trained uh, by others who are experts in that particular technology. Uh, we have a uh, bullet trajectory workshop coming up. And the instructor on record is just so thrilled about going out and shooting in order to make those uh, particular props, as they call it, for the students. And that workshop, I'll get to it uh, towards the end of this presentation. And again, this presentation is, is relatively short because I just want to do a brief uh, overview on uh, what is going on with, with the academy. The academy used to be uh, given, offered, at least twice a year, and now we're cutting it down to once a year because we have noticed that students, uh, whether they're going to another training program or attending school, you know, time is limited. And since our focus is training, we want to make sure that we can provide the type of training at the most convenient time. So summer is when we're going to be doing the entire academy. And again, it's about uh, two, 200 hours worth of training. And each module will have a certificate uh, associated with it. So each individual who has successfully completed that particular module, he or she will get the particular certificate that is signed by the instructor on record. So you would have approximately five to eight individual certificates and then a large one that you can put in the portfolio. And I'll get back to the portfolio subject because that is quite important. So just attention to the uh, crime scene investigation. Uh, individuals in this particular course will be exposed to and be expected to do their own sketching and diagramming. Uh, you'll search for evidence uh, in the dark, which is one of my favorite things. You'll be taught how to do crime scene walkthroughs and then evidence uh, collection as well. That goes without saying. Um, you have to remember certain things, biological evidence, how to store that, how to deal with that. We do have an upcoming online course regarding blood pathogens. Is, um, as a crime scene investigator, yes, uh, scene investigator, you will be exposed to particular chemical hazards and biological concerns because you just don't know uh, what might be out there. During my time at the uh, LA County Corners, we treated every decedent coming in as though they were infected with something. Because you, you had no idea uh, if they were quote unquote clean or not. And it was very common practice, and still is, um, to do to wear triple protection. Uh, when I was there, I always made sure that I was uh, gloved up three times, three times uh, the protection. Uh, we would have our particular assigned scrub outfits, and then uh, I would always put on extra protection for my uh, lower portion, my legs, my feet, uh, my forearms, and of course I, I would always wear three, three gloves, uh, and of course a, a shield. Um, you just don't know what was going to be before you. Um, our crime scenes, uh, we mock them up for you, uh, both uh, morning and nighttime, because we do need uh, for you to be experienced and uh, subjecting yourself to the rain, the cold. I know this uh, past class that we had for advanced, it was in uh, winter time in December. It was quite cold. And I have to commend those particular club, uh, those class members. They did not complain that it was, it was cold. I prefer the rain. They were out there in the rain as well. So they were real troopers, so hats off. I know I see a couple of you in there in, in today's webinar, so it's good. So give you guys a big pat on the back. Now, we do this not because we want to make fun of you or we want you to catch a cold or a bead cold. It's only because we have to bring those types of elements to you so you will really know what you're getting yourself into. Um, the Advanced Crime Scene Investigation course builds upon the basic crime scene module. Um, yes, there will be a little bit, bit of blood spatter and, of course, doing crime scenes, conducting crime scenes at night. It's quite a, a difference between uh, day and night when you're searching for evidence, because you have no idea where that piece of evidence might be. 
So uh, again, it's built upon the, the basic crime scene. And um, most of these classes, if not all of these classes, have foundation classes associated with them. My favorite module is uh, the DNA laboratory module, which uh, I'm here, yours truly, with the um, particular pipette in her hand. I generally will teach this particular module. Um, you will need to know just the basics and theory of uh, DNA typing and how to extract DNA. And some of you might be thinking, well, why do I need to know that if I'm just going to be crime scene investigator or I'm just going to do the fingerprint? Well, for two reasons. One, there is no just position. You're working as part of the team. And two, the more that you know about what the other might be doing, may be doing, for instance, in a lab setting, the better apt and the better skill and mindset that you have in order to collect that evidence. So, for example, if you know that the bench people in the laboratory will or can extract DNA from a cigarette butt and you find a cigarette butt in uh, or surrounding your crime scene, don't you think it's a great idea to collect that piece of evidence, whether or not it may or may not be related to your scene? And I see everybody nodding, right? Of course. But if you know a little bit about the other end, where your evidence is going, then you're better apt to be a better crime scene investigator, okay? It all makes sense, right? I see everybody nodding. Not nodding off, but nodding. Okay, good. Um, chemical processing is actually one of my favorite things um, to witness. I don't generally teach this class. Um, an individual friend of mine will teach it. She is from um, she's Beverly Hills PD. She's a crime scene investigator. She's a former student as well from the academy. And she will show you how to get um, tape packing tape, masking tape, off of a box or some type of uh, container without compromising the sticky side of the tape and in the box. So for example, if you can imagine you, uh, you have this particular box and, and everybody, our holiday season has just ended, so we've all already wrapped our gift, and generally the, our fingerprints are on the sticky side of a of scotch tape. But if you powder that side, that sticky side, what are you going to get? You're going to get a big mess, correct? So sticky side tape, we will show you how to get the fingerprints off of the sticky side of masking tape, packing tape, electrical tape, scotch tape, things like that. Okay. If you have a box that is covered, uh, you know, taped up, and there's I don't know, pieces of evidence or whatever the case might be, or it's mailed to you or whatever your imagine can, can tell you, and you need to get that particular tape off, we will show you how to do that without, again, compromising. Because we've all been there, we've been trying to take a label off, and what comes off with the tape or the label, it's that, that sheer piece of paper or the very top layer of the cardboard box or of the envelope. So if that happens, you can't do too, so much with the, with the sticky side tape because there goes your fingerprint. So, so far so good, everyone? So yes, yes? Good. Um, our death investigation course, we decided to separate it into two only because, um, to tell you honestly, 32 hours is not enough. Uh, our basic death investigation course, uh, the first module of that is 32 hours, and then the advanced death investigation course is another 32 hours. So, excuse me, so you're wondering, well, why split it up? The first part will uh, instruct the students how uh, to uh, investigate, just on the surface, investigate terminology, um, pictures of decedents, and how they got there. Okay. There are particular circumstances I mean. The advanced death class will, it will be able to show you time of death, determining that. We'll review various cases such as suicide, homicide, accidental. So 
So we'll have uh, many, many more case-related uh, presentations for you. Uh, gunshots, gunshot wounds, entrance, exit, things like that. So you need to know that uh, in order to proceed forward. As crime scene investigators, the chances of you being at a scene that involves a decedent is quite great. But your responsibility is not towards that decedent, because that is towards the coroners for a Los Angeles County coroner. That's what specifically I'm dealing with or speaking about. Your particular position would be evidence at the scene versus the actual decedent, which belongs to the coroner's office. So we will split it up in that way. And that those two courses, we're looking at about um, probably uh, April or so, March, April. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not quite too sure because it really depends upon the instructor's schedule. Most of our instructors, um, they do week work on uh, an odd schedule, as I say. One of um, our instructors is a corner field investigator. Um, she works from 7 p.m. Um, to 5 a.m. So it's, it's kind of you know hit and miss, but I am working on that, and we will get that course schedule up and running. Um, if you get anything from this, it's the ability and the challenge to work outside to elements that you, you have no control over. The rain, I love it when it does rain, because I try to encourage all the students to go out there. I think the last class, they're ready to shoot me, uh, because I love the rain. Get out there. Let me need to investigate. This picture on the left, uh, I remember this one well. It, you know, we are here in Southern California. We're experiencing a lot of rain that day, and they, they had to figure out the blood um, pattern, as you can see the blood stain patterns there. You know, we deal with, with hot, um, hot temperatures, which is not my favorite. I started one summer, uh, this was years ago when I first started uh, in the uh, academy, because I too am a graduate. Uh, I volunteered my time at, uh, at a crime scene uh, cleanup uh, company, and it was located in Riverside. So if anybody is aware of Riverside in the summer, uh, hot, hot, hot. And then of course you're dressed up in your protective gear so you won't be exposed to anything. And I'll tell you that particular summer I lost so much weight, it was the greatest thing. But it also showed me the type of living conditions that people uh, can be found in, the type of living conditions that individuals are exposed to. And one of the greatest challenges is that uh, you put aside your, your personal thoughts and you become the professional that I know all of you are, and you just get the work done. Just you're not, uh, you're not there to judge. Because if you start putting down your personal uh, thoughts, it can sometimes cloud your professional actions, and you don't want that. On to the next slide, uh, I'm going to just show you, we've had uh, many past graduates now uh, in the particular field, uh, individuals that have started from class one, which was approximately 2000, um, let's see, I was in, in class seven, so that was 2001, uh, individuals that are instructors uh, now and others that uh, have gone on to uh, other professional positions. Um, so we, this is just a small list. You can see Adriana Arroyo, she's the third one down. She's one of our instructors. Uh, Ryan McNamara, he's been a past instructor. So we try to focus in on our past graduates because one, they can tell you what it's like to go through the program. Two, they can also shed light into what you need to do in order to be successful. Because it's just not having the degree. You have to have the drive and determination to do that and also be aware that there's going to be many sacrifices that uh, you will be exposed to. Um, we've got a lot of workshops coming up. Uh, the book trajectory is in a couple of weeks. Um, the toxicology is coming up. Uh, we have uh, one individual. And I, I will point her out to you because she's in the next slide. A past student, um, and she's now a toxicologist for San Luis Obispo Sheriff Corner. And if you don't know where San Luis Obispo County is, it's in Central California, about four hours from, from where we're at right now. The Photoshop and Forensics uh, will teach you how to use Adobe Photoshop with latent prints. 
the blood spatter is coming up. Uh, individuals, you students, when you sign up for this, you'll actually be able to do uh, get into Tyvek suit and determine what type of blood stain pattern uh, blood spatter is on the wall. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we have, again, a lot of workshops coming up, and uh, that is the main focus of getting you guys trained and, of course, reading. If you're not uh, friends with us on Facebook, you, you've got to get there because that's where I put up the majority of uh, announcements, internships, field trips, because we are in the work of doing a couple of field trips uh, coming up. So you have to, you have to get there. Our last slide, which I'm going to put up right now, um, let me see, we can see Terry Prince. She's the one, two, I'm looking at the very bottom pictures or the top ones, either one. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's the sixth one over from the left. She is kneeling down um, and she has some short hair. That's Terry Prince. She, again, is the toxicologist from San Luis Obispo County. And she will come in and actually bring uh, minute amounts of um, drug samples for you, the students, to test. Yes, she has a DEA license for that, so everything is legal and kosher, if you will. And we do not put you in any type of danger that would uh, harm you in any sort of way. Again, it's all, it's all training, and that's what we want to do. So as I alluded to before, uh, our uh, web page is going under a uh, revision, reconstruction. Um, this particular web address is still up and running, so you can reach us there. I see that Facebook, without the F, the Ace book, is there. <laughs> so I apologize for the typo. Um, Facebook slash uh, FTU for Friends of Training Element 187. And then there's our Twitter address as well. I encourage all of you uh, to get plugged in with social media. And I do have a webinar that's coming up uh, next month regarding how to get a position um, using social media, which is a good thing or is a bad thing. And I don't want to get too much, too much into that. I promised you it would be about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Uh, we're rounding that. We're getting to that time right now. Uh, any questions that I can see on the screen, please just pop that in, and I'll be more than happy to answer that as I, I go. Um, giving you more information regarding training. We do have a couple of seminars coming up as well. We will have our gang uh, person come in and speak about that. And of course, some guest speakers, um, trying to line up some individuals to provide uh, professional advice regarding the type of cases that they've been exposed to, how to get into forensic, uh, the forensic position. I always tell everybody, um, you know what, you got to start volunteering somewhere. Uh, and I have a lot of people say, well, I don't have the time, you know, the family. I, I understand all that. I understand all that. But if you need to uh, monitor or prioritize your time accordingly, then please do so. If the, the academy cuts into your personal time, then this is not the time for you. Then wait. When it is good for you, because we'll still be here. The training will still be here. Again, we have online courses that are scheduled to be launched in March. We have seminars. We have webinars, obviously, this one. We have a couple of paid webinar, uh, webinars that we will be launching. And those include something like the following. Uh, individuals will be registered for the webinar. There will be a registration fee. The uh, particular case will be sent to you. And then a week thereafter, we will all come back together as a group, online group, a class, if you will, in this type of setting, this webinar, and we will show you, either myself or one of the other instructors will show you the actual case photos. We start discussing this case. Uh, I could ask a couple of questions, such as what do you think happened, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another way of being trained, you know, virtually. We do have a lot of individuals, not only here in Southern California, we have some in Northern California, and I know that we have gotten uh, some inquiries uh, as far as India and also now Canada. I just got a couple today uh, from Canada. Okay, got to reach us again, uh, friendsofscienceacademy.org, or you can always uh, find us on Facebook or Twitter. Anybody have any questions?
Okay, great. Um, you can reach me there. Um, I think uh, Karen's got hundreds of questions, but just not right now. That's okay. You guys can reach me. Uh, my email address is info at forensicscienceacademy.org. But again, you can find us uh, on Facebook. There is an S there. Um, and then on Twitter. And you can always post things like that as well. I thank you for coming, for attending. I know your schedule is sometimes hectic, but it's a great thing uh, that you guys are here. And I'm so happy to be here presenting this material for you. I am passionate about forensic science. I am even more passionate about training students that laterally they want to get into a position, either from law enforcement or private investigations or from, from students who need to have a two or four year and they don't know where to turn. I'm here for you to lead the way so you guys can go all the way and get a position. Now, I will tell you that it is, it is difficult now um, to get a position because uh, most forensic individuals are not leaving right now, okay? But I always ask my students, what are you gonna do between now and when those positions open? Well, you're going to be ready, right? Because you've trained either with us, you've received a uh, degree, you have been trained uh, at another program, or perhaps at, uh, and I encourage women to do this, perhaps you will look into being a uh, reservist for either sheriff or uh, police. That's a, that's a good way to go. A lot of people, a lot of women don't even think that way, but, you know, I did it when I was 42, so you guys can do it. And I can see, can, can just imagine you guys laughing. So anyway, I'm going to leave you guys uh, here. If you need to reach me, let me know. I have recorded this particular webinar, and so I'm going to post it. Um, I will be posting a lot of uh, information via Facebook. I uh, just posted something uh, up that if you do register for the serial profiling of the serial killers, um, this is another link that you have to go to in order to get um, the common characteristics of uh, serial killers. So you know, please be mindful for that. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so very much, and I hope to see you soon. I know a couple of you have already registered for the bullet trajectory, so I will see you then. And again, our um, profiling class will start um, the latter part of uh, February. So the only thing that we have going on is the bullet trajectory, and that is in a couple of weeks. All right, thank you so much.